Yeah, we have a situation in America today where we are emulating gulags from the Soviet Union. The days of the Soviet Union have passed, but not, not in our country. My client did nothing violent. He stole nothing. He was not assaultive. He was not threatening. He was peaceful. He was supportive of law enforcement. And in fact, we unearthed video, video footage of a high-ranking Capitol Police officer giving permission to my client to enter the Capitol, provided he was peaceful. This is now the 130th day my client sits in solitary confinement. He had no weapon. He made no threats. He was not violent. He did not steal. He called for peace. He helped police thwart a theft in the cabin. He is not a violent man. And here we are in this great country dealing with and addressing the reality that we are putting people like Mr. Chansley, who are not violent, were not violent, with a zero criminal history, in jail, in solitary confinement, for 130 days, while a government makes misleading statements, misrepresentations, and now we've come to find out out and out lies about my client not having permission to walk in the cattle. Yeah. We have to provide the video to the government. Look, we've seen the video. I've seen cops allowing people into the Capitol. I saw that little uh, smaller officer removing the French barricades. I've seen it. I'm just like, why can't you get a judge to, to see all this stuff? Because well, I agree with you. It sounds, it's totally outrageous. It's very Soviet-esque. What's well, going on? Really, How can you fix this? Well, well, it's really scary. That government, that government that's our government, has the duty and the responsibility to disclose this video to every criminally accused. We gave it to the government. They have not given it out to the other defendants' counsel. We had to make sure it went public. And this is not just an image of police moving barricades. This is a high-ranking Capitol Police officer stating from his own yeah. mouth that, yes, you may come in if you're peaceful. So your client, I've, I've seen all kinds of footage. Hey, let's face it. He did some things he shouldn't have done that day. He did apologize. I want to put that apology up. I think we have it. Jacob Chansley's apology. He's made it clear that he regrets what he did. Can we put it up on the screen if we have it? If not, that's okay. Here we go. I deeply regret and am very sorry I entered the Capitol building on January 6, 2021. I should not have been there, period. I am sorry for having aroused fear in the hearts of others. That was wrong, period. Okay, he's showing contrition. Uh, all right, finally, I, what's next? How do you how do you finish this? I mean, this well, is crazy. Yeah, what, what's going to have to happen here is we have to be very cognizant of the reality that these people need compassion. We need to now face up to the reality that the government is not being forthcoming and transparent and candid. And every single defendant and every single defendant's counsel has to scream from the highest mountain that we are not a gulag. We are not a nation state that allows for this type of treatment of nonviolent offenders. Right. Period. Ever. Ver Finally, sir, I have heard some attorneys make noise about, well, President Trump is responsible for some of the things that he said uh, in the run up to January 6th. I personally do not accept that. And I point to January 6th, where he specifically said, rap. He specifically said, march peacefully and patriotically. Are you using President Trump as part of your defense? No, but I have to be candid with you. My client, who loved and adored Trump, still loves and adores Trump, but he's really disappointed. He's disappointed because he feels like he has been left behind. But he understands. And he's not backing down on his belief that Trump had great things and plan this country. But whether he was pro-Trump or anti-Trump, we're talking about America with a gulag, with people being yeah. held in solitary confinement because they didn't think what other people wanted them. It's to totally, think. it's totally unacceptable, sir. 
Uh, good luck. Uh, uh, send your client uh, my best wishes. Yes, I am sending him my best wishes. I, I think he should not have acted that way. However, he apologized, and I didn't see him break anything or hurt anybody. And this is way too much. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. I'd like to bring in Watkins. Julie. You bet. Uh, Julie Kelly now, senior contributor for the American Greatness, the conservative online news publication. Uh, Julie, uh, <laughs> this should not be happening in America. It absolutely should not be. I, I do want to say something about Mr. Watkins, though. He uh, uh, has, in a recent interview, uh, compared the propaganda over the past four years to Hitler-ish propaganda. He also said some very unkind things about uh, defendants to January 6th that I don't think are helpful or kind or necessary. So I think that it's important that I say that. that since I've just followed him up on this interview. But look, there are a lot of people like Mr. Chansley and other protesters who are caught up uh, not only in the moment, but as you saw in that video, we actually published it on American Greatness, um, that they felt like they were entitled and allowed to be there. So my question is, since Mr. Chansley and so many protesters face trespassing and disorderly conduct charges after the fact, why didn't police officers immediately arrest them while they were there? Why did they allow them to enter the building, go into the Senate chambers, be outside, go through, through the building. And now the FBI is on a nationwide manhunt trying to track down people who thought that they were there lawfully. Um, and so this is a, a real problem. Uh, and now the FBI has made it such a priority on every field office's website and Twitter address, you have these suspects, the FBI's most wanted. I mean, it's very, very dramatic. And it seems to be, and if you go through their social media publications, this is their top priority, finding anybody who was there on that day. And of course, you know that the Brian Sicknick story was essentially a lie. He was not killed by being hit in the head with a fire extinguisher. He was, uh, well, he died of natural causes. Uh, that's right. And the FBI, I think it's just embarrassing. And what a message to our enemies, both here and abroad, that our FBI is so fixated on tracking down, you know, target grandmas who and, and pl plastering their face on their social media account. You, you talked about Brian Sicknick, a huge lie fabricated, not just by the U.S. Capitol Police, but also by the New York Times. The two men charged with spraying him uh, with pepper spray, not bear spray, as we were originally told, those two men uh, were arrested in March. They remained behind bars, denied bail. I listened into a court hearing last week where a Reagan-appointed judge refused to let either men leave before a pending trial including one man whose family put up a $15 million bond package. Yeah. Now, there's no evidence that that spray even hit Officer Sicknick. It certainly had nothing to do with his untimely, tragic death at the age of 42. Uh, but what we have now, Greg, as you know, are political prisoners being held hostage uh, by their own government and by Joe Biden's Justice Department. We referred to this earlier, and I want to just make sure everybody sees it again. They need to be reminded what President Trump said on January 6th to the peacefully assembled people in front of him uh, when he addressed the crowd. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. Peacefully and patriotically, uh, <laughs> clear as day. So what do you think is going to happen? I mean, the media are not even curious about this anymore. They seem to want to believe the worst about these people, or they just don't care. Well, I think that the narrative was orchestrated very early, actually, that day, that this was an armed insurrection. That's another thing that there is no proof of. No one has been arrested with carrying a firearm into the Capitol building that day. Yeah, no one was um, armed. And so... No one was armed and no one has been right. charged Nobody with... had a firearm. And no one has been charged with insurrection, which, by the way, is a chargeable offense. But since no one did it, they can't charge anybody with it. Um, it's, it's really fascinating that this is happening and very sad. We have to leave it there. To be continued, for sure, Julie Kelly from The American Greatness, thank you so much. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.